Is the movie Detour from 1945 a hidden noir gem, or is it The Wrong Turn? Find out today on Really Old Movies. Welcome to Really Old Movies. I'm your host, Harrison Scullin, and today I'll be discussing the film Detour from 1945. Some essential movie details. For years, it was believed that this movie was only shot in six days, when in reality it was shot in 14 days according to a shooting script from Edgar Ulmer's daughter. And another movie detail, the budget was super small and it was severely trimmed down from the original script, hence why the movie is only an hour and 10 minutes long. All right, so now we'll get into the plot. A man named Al Roberts, he's hitchhiking across the United States to get to his girlfriend Sue in Los Angeles. He reaches the state of Arizona, and this is where all of his troubles start to begin. One of the drivers, who has been taking sleeping pills, he falls out of the car dead when Al pulls him over because he wanted to put the top on the car because it started to rain. Rather than get some help from the police or from the local town, Al decides to take on the driver's identity and continue driving on towards Los Angeles. On his way, he sees a woman hitchhiking and decides to drive her as well. He introduced himself as Charles, which is the name of the driver, and she immediately sees right through it. As she reveals, she was just dropped off by Charles only a few days prior in that exact car and with that exact same name. So she knew exactly that he was lying to her. Vera is her name. She decides to blackmail Al into doing her bidding. Otherwise, she'll turn him in for murdering Charles, even though he's innocent. First, they decide to sell the car so that Al can be free of it. But she decides to sabotage this deal when she learns from a newspaper Charles' dad is dying and the rightful heir would get the millions, would get his millions. So she schemes to wait until the dad dies, then take the money. More and more as they fight with each other and discuss with each other, she is super drunk and decides to take the phone and locks herself in the bedroom to call the police. But rather than call the police, she decides to wrap the cord of the phone around her neck so that when Al tries to pull on it to, you know, get her to get the phone away from her, it chokes her to death instead, thus making him a murderer, even though he wasn't intending to. And her plan goes out exactly how she plans it to go. And he does exactly that. And he again decides to run away until he reaches Reno, which is where the film starts. It kind of starts in flashback form and then brings us back to this point and he imagines himself being arrested for his crimes and that's where the film ends all right so now i'll get into my thoughts on the the movie so the plot i gave it a three out of five i thought that was pretty good i did like the twist of vera plotting her own death and framing al with murder but honestly everything else like the flashbacking i didn't think that was really necessary honestly it was not needed at all and there were also times it was a little confusing. Like, did Al get arrested? Did he not? I'm not entirely certain. Because it sounded like over uh, his narration that he wasn't. But it, we were seeing that on the screen. So maybe it was, you know, an idea he had. It wasn't very clear what was going on. And because of that, I brought the plot down to a 3 out of 5. All right. Now, in regards to acting, I gave it a 2.5 out of 5. I thought it was okay. I wasn't really a fan of either Al or Vera's acting. I thought they were way hamming it, hamming it up and over the top. I I was just not a fan of it. And Vera especially, she was a little too crazy for me. Now, she was supposed to be a crazy character. Don't get me wrong. But she didn't have any redeeming qualities to her. She was very two-dimensional. But again, I think if the movie was longer, we may have gotten more of that. More scenes of her humanity, I guess, because the movie is only, like I said, only an hour and 10 minutes long. And I think there were more things that were cut out that maybe would have redeemed the characters better. But still gave it a two and a half out of five. In regards to directing, same thing, two and a half out of five. I thought it was OK, but I really wish the story was fleshed out just a bit more, like another 10, 15 minutes. I know sometimes I say they need to trim down a movie. I think this is an opposite problem. There isn't enough. And it's not like those moments where you say, oh, if only there was more behind the scenes, more to get. No, it's not like that. It's more of what's happening. <laughs> like I don't understand this plot. There needs to be a little bit more explanation. There's not a whole lot going on. 
doesn't really make sense. I kind of blame the directing, but I would also blame the studios. I think the studios trimmed it down and interfered with it a bit. Uh, but like I said, I don't know. I, I, I didn't think the flashbacks were really necessary. So they didn't really add anything to the film. In fact, it, it made it more confusing. All right, regards to cinematography and special effects, I gave it a three out of five. I thought it was pretty good. But it's sad that you could tell it was a low budget movie, which shouldn't be a detriment, but I don't know. They could have used other shots. It was really obvious some of the shots were just the same reversed because like drivers were driving on the wrong side. People get into the driver's side to so the passenger side. It's kind of obvious. And it's also obvious we're in California the whole time. Like it says, right now we're in Kansas or right now we're here, which are more, you know, uh, you know, beautiful, got trees and all of that. Very obvious we were in Joshua Tree or an area like that because there were, you know, Joshua trees everywhere, cacti everywhere. Very obvious we were in California. It was very obvious the same street too. But other than that, I, I thought it was okay. I give it a three out of five. In regards to music, uh, not really any music, which is too bad. I think it would have added some suspense to it in some scenes. So eh, what was there was okay. Just three out of five. All right. So tallying that all up, that brings my letterbox score to a 2.8 out of five, which I'm rounding to a three out of five. Now, would I recommend this movie? Um, Yes, but only because of the twist ending with Vera and the phone cord. But... Honestly, after you watch it the first time, you kind of know what's going to happen. So all of that tension, all of that is just not going to be there again. You know, I don't think this is a movie you can watch twice and get the same enjoyment out of it. Which for me, I didn't get a whole lot. So it'd probably make it even worse. But yeah, I only if you want to only for your first time, I wouldn't recommend watching it multiple times. All right. Well, thank you guys so much for listening to today's episode. Make sure to subscribe to our Instagram and Facebook at Really Old Movies, where I discuss details about the week's particular film. New podcast episodes are released Saturdays at 8 p.m. Pacific Standard Time on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and Amazon Music. All right. Well, thank you so much. This has been Really Old Movies. I'm your host, Harrison Scullin. Take care.